final episode of What If Debuting on Disney Plus. It's time to rank all four Marvel Disney Plus shows from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Nathan. This channel is where I talk about movies. If you like if you like to talk about movies a lot, maybe you should subscribe to this channel. And also down below in the comment section, be sure to share the ranking of all four Marvel Disney Plus shows. And this is um just my list, so don't take it so seriously. Also, I give all of them positive reviews. There'll be some gaps in the way, but um, this will. This is a list that was pretty easy for me to make, actually, because then there's only four. So, but since I'll give them positive reviews, something's gotta come in last, and something's gotta come in first. But with that said. I'm going to start the ranking. Coming in the last place is The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Now, I did a video a few months back saying that this was one of my most anticipated Marvel Disney Plus shows of this of that time. And when the show debuted, like, I actually enjoyed the show enough, but I really dug the trailers beforehand. And then we got the show, which I think is good, but I think it had a lot more retention potential that it actually got first off they ch they were so obsessed to make the flag smashers not that bad that they're not even closing an urgent threat it's the mcu so you need to have an urgent threat for our heroes to stop but then in more than half of the season they're just stealing medical supplies however they did blow up a building and kill some people so they posed a little bit of a threat but not all that much also, um, it sends a very re weird message. Like, like again, the Flag Smashers didn't pose an urgent threat. You have Sam make this speech at the end. So, it shouldn't... It, it, so, it feels weird about what the message that they're trying to deliver and stuff. And, as I've said before, it was a little disappointing because it had so much potential... And it didn't quite live up to that. In my case, this should have been an easy win. Taking two side characters and putting them front and center in their own story. And what they do to day day life. But it just fell apart a little for me. But I still enjoyed it enough. In third place, Loki. Now, when they first announced this show... I wasn't really sure what to make of it. Because it took the scene from Endgame. And then retold it in he in this show. But then when the show debuted, I realized what they were actually going for. And it's highly consequential to what happens in the rest of the MCU. First of all, you just have Loki and Mobius who have great dynamics, chemistry with one another. And then also, you just have a great mystery. In the first two episodes, you have... Um, them trying to stop a Loki variant, that's what you think they're trying to do. But then, in the next few episodes, you realize the Timekeepers are not real. The TVA are the real villains. And then, in the final two episodes, you see that a variant of Kang the Conqueror is, in fact, responsible for all the multiverses happening. And it's highly consequential to what happens in the MCU because you have No Way Home, Quantumania. We got What If, which has all these multiverses. Just a lot of multiverse stuff. So this is a show that I really enjoyed. And to be clear, there's a pretty big gap from Falcon the Morning Soldier to Loki. Our runner-up is WandaVision. Now, when they first posted the first three episodes of the show, I had no idea what to make of it because we we're dropped in the middle of a 50, 60, 70 sitcom. But then in the fourth episode and fifth and sixth episodes when they start getting exposition, this show became one of the most intriguing mysteries of all time, of all the MCU for me. And just in general, for me, this is just a very enjoyable show to watch. As you see, Wanda is kind of the villain of the show, which I didn't think really worked, but I thought it made sense to go in that direction when Agatha is taking advantage of it. I thought that was that made sense in light of what was happening of the show in the show. Also, Wanda has such great dynamics with everybody, like Monica, Vision, her own kids, and the people outside of the dome. That stuff is just really interesting to me, and I just really liked the mystery. So, 
it makes it high on the list. But in first place is What If. Now, I did not expect this to be in first place at all. But then, in the show, there was a bunch of things that I really, really enjoyed. Like, What If. Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands. What if T'Challa was Star-Lord? What if Captain Carter took the serum? Just all of that stuff I had a lot of fun with. It was a show that was not afraid to take risks because it took risks in light of multiverse stuff and it was animated so it wasn't afraid to do that and it worked. And the finale, it's kind of the fun finale as you see all of these... Um, what if um, scenarios teaming up together to battle Ultron Sentry, who's the actual villain of all these multiverse scenarios. And the Watcher is just a very cool narrator to narrate the show. And I had fun, fun, and I had a lot of fun with all of these what if scenarios. Maybe except the one with Thor throwing a party and Captain Marvel being a party pooper. But I just really enjoyed most of these what if scenarios. I had a lot of fun with them. I love that it was animated. I love that all of these characters are coming together in the finale. Therefore, for me, it is my favorite of the Marvel Disney Plus shows. Be sure down below in the comment section to share your ranking of all four MCU Disney Plus shows. Also, I will be doing more MCU content because I'm a huge fan of the MCU. If you like to talk about movies and TV a lot, just subscribe and like this video. And also, if you want more content like this, down below in the comment section, recommend me what videos I should do. And I will see you guys in the next one.